Something else that makes someone satisfied in the discovery of God's presence is this. Remember when Jacob was anxious and he had left his father's house and he worried if he'd ever see his mother and father again and Esau wanted to kill him and he ended up in a place that didn't have hope and he was scared to sleep in the desert at night? Difficult emotions. And then the latter came to him and the beautiful dream and Christ ascended to him to tell him to not fear and that he would be with him. He awoke and said a very important sentence. He said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. I could not imagine that the Lord was with me, and I was not aware. The Lord is with you all the time, but you aren't aware. We aren't calling to the Lord and saying, Come, O Lord. He is truly present. You are just discovering that He is beside you. You are discovering. It says in the story of St. Anthony, the one that one day demons came to him, and St. Anthony was the first monk and was very serious in his spiritual life, so the demons were warring against him in the desert. One time they took on the forms of different scary animals. He was frightened and then cried out, O oh Jesus, my Lord, forgive me. Immediately they went away. He then reproached Christ, saying, Lord, why did you leave me to be scared? Why did you let them come to me like that? He said, My beloved, I was beside you. I was waiting for you to call. As soon as you called, I pushed them away from you. But you didn't realize I was next to you in the cell. Just as they fight against you, I am next to you. You are the one who didn't realize it. Not realizing seems to be our constant state. One wakes up and does not realize that the Lord is next to their bed. And they don't realize that he is sitting next to them at the dining table. And they don't realize that he is walking next to them in the street and is riding in the car with them. And they don't realize that he was with them in their service and when they're with their children. It's as if they're living alone, but you're not living alone. Discovering God's presence makes a person very satisfied. This is a treatment for the anemia. You will have security and you will have love. Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. Let's think now about finding God all day. This is very clear in the Song of Songs. It talks about the story of the bride running around trying to find her groom. It is as if she is crazy. She can't stand that, she, that he is away from her. She becomes relaxed when he embraces her as if she is a small child. And she says, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Now let us look for Christ in every person. Christ is in each and every single one of us. Don't we all have Christ's spirit within us? So then Christ is within you. Every day you meet people who have our Lord within them. Why are you excluded from the ability to see him? Maybe everyone around you will say a word to you that he wants to tell you. With this spirit, you will encounter the day in a very different way. All these people around you are Christ. This sick person is Christ. The poor person is Christ. The child is Christ. The Christian is Christ. And even those who are not Christian because they were made in his image. Those who love our Lord will see him in every person. Those who search for him will find him. Because in the Song of Songs, it says, I asked and looked, and when I found the one I love, I held him and would not let him go. Our Lord Jesus tells us to ask and find. Asking here means ask in your heart, and you will find him. He is standing at the door and is asking to be let in, and dine with you. We can look for God in any place. You might ask, where is God in a country that doesn't know God? No, God is still there. He is in heaven, in the clouds, in the rain, in the trees. He is in the plants that grow, in people's health. But people aren't aware. Look for God in prayer. Many of our prayers, my beloved, are counted against us, not for us, as one of the saints put it. If someone just says a prayer as repetition, they're not paying attention to what they said. They don't even remember what they said. They finish and it's as if they're doing homework that they're supposed to do. My beloved, prayer's meaning is from Jesus' words. Be by yourself and sit with your Father. It's not important what you say. What's important is that you are sitting with Him, that you feel Him, that you speak with our Lord and are satisfied with Him. Then you go out and see what you want to do. However, we've turned prayer into just saying some words and we do it to relieve our conscience. But did you speak with our Lord? I didn't pay attention. 
Did you sit with him? Are you satisfied with him? Do you feel him? Did he respond to you? Did he tell you something? Did he embrace you? You didn't pay attention to any of this. However, if you went into a room and closed the door and prayed to your father and you lived the meaning that Christ said, then every time you pray it will be as if you have entered heaven. When you come out of your room, it will be as if you're descending down from heaven. Discovering God's presence means you need to be ready to receive messages, meaning God speaks to us all the time. God loves when his children listen to him. He sends constant messages. However, because we are not focused, again, going back to the idea of anemia, one feels that they need people to encourage them. My brother, God is telling you that he loves you. You're waiting for so-and-so to respect you? Who is that person compared to our Lord? You're not paying attention. I'm waiting for people to care about me. Who are these people? God himself cares about the smallest issues in our lives. There is someone who is paying attention. Those who know this will say, God does very small things. He speaks in change, in produce, in clothing, in water, in a faucet. It's as if our Lord is living with this person second by second, hand in hand, and does the smallest things in their life. How lucky he is. Because they have discovered God's presence and our Lord will not shy away from doing the smallest things in his children's lives. I remember one time I watched a film, Jesus of Nazareth, or one of those old movies about Jesus. In one of the scenes, something stuck in my mind. They were pushing the children away and Jesus said, no, leave them. And he embraced them. He put a child on his lap and the child brought a doll to him and the doll's hand was broken. Jesus took the doll and fixed the broken hand. The girl became very happy. It was as if he cured the doll to make the girl happy. Is it okay that our Lord does something like this or is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. Won't this make his children happy? He does this and he does more than this. This happens in our lives. There are things that happen that are very small. Our Lord does them because he loves us. However, you are waiting on people to take on that role. People, unfortunately, are not generous with their love. So why do you wait on people if our Lord is with you?